Kerwin P. Slippers here, and we're already on part five of the wheelie horse. Doing that custom wrestle my baby. So why don't we jump in where we left, left off last time and see what we're up to. <laughs> well, we got our new steel two inch pulley, which we got from Stens. It must be for like an edger or something. But they had a two inch pulley with a three quarter bore. Steel pulley. There's part number. It wasn't that much money. We got it all hooked back up. And then we looked at the engine because we were having some problems with the motor. Um, I got this engine from somewhere I can't remember where. They said it ran. It does run, but it doesn't run right. So started taking a closer look at it, pull the air cleaner off. And when we run it and rev it up, which I'll show you in a minute, it's shooting gas out of the carburetor. And that's an indication that it's got leaky valves. So it's probably gonna need a valve job. So that's, that's an indication of that. We thought it might have been, you know, it didn't have any back pressure because it's got an open header. So we rigged up a muffin on it real quick and it still was shooting gas out of the carburetor. So that tells me that it's got leaky valves. So we got to pull the trans apart to fix third gear. So we'll pull the motor and we'll do a valve job on it. For the brakes, uh, I came up with an idea. This is the brake drum. And as you notice, it's got flats on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go visit Farmer Dan and I'm gonna have him make a spacer that's gonna fit inside here. He could probably clean up the inside of this because it's cast, so it's nice and flat. We'll have him make a spacer that fits in here. And we'll have to, I don't know if we're gonna have to make it thicker or not, but anyway, we'll make a spacer and then we'll put this disc on the spacer and then we can drill through it and tap it. We could tap this and bolt this disc to this existing drum and then uh, we'll just have to make a bracket for the caliper and we'll go back to that existing uh, VMC hydraulic brake system so we can make this thing stop a lot, a lot faster. Good. Those other brakes weren't really working out at all. No. And then we also bought a bigger diameter pulley. So we could play with the gearing a little bit. So with a bigger pulley here, we may be able to get it to go faster. We don't know yet because we haven't been able to get it in third gear. And we haven't been able to drive it, you know, get it to run good because our, our pulley broke. But let me show you what it does when we rev it up and how it shoots gas out of there. Oh, I better stand back. Let me find a choke. That's another thing, we gotta hook up the choke. Spraying a bunch of gas all over the oh nice all over the hood so it's probably got leaky valves so I'll pull the heads off and then I guess we'll go through the trans too 
So yeah, a lot more, a lot more than we anticipated, right, Slip Dog? Oh yeah, learning a lot of stuff on this build. And I hope you're learning too. Yeah. Learning's fun. It is. We I'm make it fun. I'm having a good time. You want to watch boring? Go watch some other boring video. You want fun? Watch right this here. channel. Right here. A couple of fun guys right here. Not like fungus, like fun guy. We're like fun guys. Not like fun guy. Like mold. We're not mold. Well, he's kind of mold. Yeah, I'm a little bit moldy. <laughs> he's a moldy old dude. A little bit. Yeah, crusty, moldy, whatever. You want to take this baby for a little ride? Gloves out here. <laughs> What's with the black leather gloves? What are you? Speed racer? I know it. Woo! All right, let's do it. Choke this baby. Sounds good. Some gas. You know how to ride anything? No. I'm done riding it. So stick around for the next video. And there's your supper. Here we go. <laughs>
we're all good now. Got it all cleaned out. So when we slap it back on, hopefully we won't have any issues. <laughs> so now let's uh, let's go yank that transmission apart. See why it won't go into third gear. Okay, got the transmission out now. And I got the hubs off. Got all the shafts cleaned up. And I ordered the new seals and a new gasket, so we'll be getting those in soon. So when we tear this baby apart. But uh, Terrell's got a little thing going on over here. Yeah, we wanted to drain out the old transmission fluid. This is the 80, 90 weight gear oil that was in there. Looks like a cappuccino. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, when it has that coffee cream colored look, that's because there's water. Water had got in the oil. That's why it looks like that. So then we thought we would flush it out. So we poured some uh, red diesel fuel in there, that off-road diesel fuel. And we poured it in there. And this is what we poured out of it. And then we poured some more in it, let it sit overnight. And that's what we poured out of it the next day. So now it's all ready to be disassembled. So we need to take this out, the shifter, which is just loosen this nut and back out this set screw that's in there. And this will this will come out. Then we'll take these bolts off and we'll pop this side cover off. And we'll take a peek inside and see why it won't go into third gear. It's probably just the shifting fork is probably just rusted and it won't let it engage all the way. But we'll find out when we get it apart. So let's get some tool slippers and take this shifter off and take them bolts out. Alrighty. Looks like 9 16 Okay. And this is probably, I don't know, 7 16 or 3 8 7 16 here. I got a 9 16 here. There you go. There's your dinner. See how that works? That set screw goes into that hole. And that's how you adjust the tension on it when you go to put it back together. And then you lock down this jam. Flip dog's taking the This thing's been apart since like it was me. I think uh, Elskin said this was uh, 63 or 73 or something like that. All right, let's try to split this thing in two here. There's a little lip, and I got me a a blunt chisel. together for a long time. Any other spot you see I can put a little spot right here. Yeah, I see that. Here? Maybe right there. We'll give you too many prying points. Yeah. Use these bolts. There we go. Oh. There we go. I don't want to start putting screwdrivers and stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Slide up. Oh, let's see. You know what? Let's put a little bit of some kind of lubricant on here.
Here we go. Oh yeah. Tap on that, slippers, with that rawhide hammer. You got it. Tap on it. Ding, 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 There's ding. a lot of needle bearings in here. I hope they don't come falling out. Yeah, we're probably going to get some grease and pack it in there. I'm worried those needle bearings that might fall out. Pack them up. Pack them up. You can see there's some little bit of wear here. You can feel some wear on that. You can feel it's kind of raised down here too. Look at this gear. Look at these gears are all. He did give us another transmission um, elk skins. Yeah, look at these are all rounded. Oh, this was pretty bad too. Is that all rounded too? You can feel it. Yeah. These are all rounded off. So here's our shifting forks here. Rusty in here. Not much to it. Pretty simple and basic. Looks a little easier than the RJ. Yeah. We'll have to get that other transmission, split that one in half, and hopefully whatever gears we need are good in that one. All right, well, that's as far as we can go till we get that other trans in here. But this is all rusty. This, this is it right here, I bet you. This is why it won't go in a third. This is all rusted right here. So these, these won't slide. Those are supposed to be free and yeah. move up and down. And that's the that's thing I've seen online that happens, because look. Ugh. Because water had got down in here and rusted all this up. But yeah, this should be a pretty simple fix once we get the, the gasket and the new seals. Sweet. This is kind of raised here, I don't know. If, oh, that's just some sealer or something. Yeah, we'll clean all this up. I didn't know what that was. It felt like it was hard, like a piece of metal or something like maybe somebody driven a screwdriver in there at one time. This gear here, we may be able to flip this one over. See how it's all war here, but it's not war on that side? Uh-huh. I don't know if that'll matter. Yeah, this is our reverse gear. Pretty sure this is for reverse. So we may be able to flip this over and use the other side of it. Because it doesn't look like anything meshes with this. This meshes with this for reverse. All these look good on here. It's just this gear, this gear, and this gear down here are bad. Probably from trying to jam it in the third gear and it not locking in, it just started grinding this away. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I've been wrong once before. <laughs> once I was wrong, but I was mistaken. I think we got a hat that says that somewhere. So I'm worried that these needle bearings may fall out of these bearing housings here. And it already looks like this one here might be missing one. So it might be in the bottom of the trans. We'll fish around with magnet on a stick. Maybe we can find it. So to keep them from falling out, I'm going to take some grease. 
because this will be like peanut butter for the needle bearings to hold them in place. So we can move this cover around and clean it and not have to worry about all them bearings falling out and scattering all over and then we got to stick them back in there. And then down here on this one too. So there's a little tip for you. Hold those needle bearings in place. I've had to do this on uh, the transmission on my Spitfire when I rebuilt it last winter. So now's a good time to get your cell phone out and take some pictures of this transmission while you got it apart so you can go back to them as a reference. So your cell phone is good for more than just taking selfies of yourself or taking pictures of your junk. Lawnmowers. So I'm gonna take some pictures of this transmission now. Ready, Slivers? Yeah, let me get in here. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's another one of me. All right, we got the valves out of the head and we're gonna get ready to resurface them. And as you can tell, one of them's got a pretty good sized groove in it. And that was probably that one that was really leaking bad. The one I could spin that had all the oil around it. This one here. And this one still needs to be ground. These are the exhaust valves. The intake valves don't look that bad. So we'll resurface them. Slippers will lap them in and get that engine back together. We got it. The second transmission we got from the skin man. We're about to split it in half to see how this one looks. All right. Give it a few whacks with the rawhide hammer. Giddy up. Put them up, rawhide hammer. Don't really give you too many points. Hitting it in that corner. Whoa. Whoa, almost hit myself in the face. That would have been a bad day. There you go. Pry on it a little bit. It was looking pretty rusty inside. Except there's, this one's got a bad dip or something. We're gonna find out once we... It's like opening a... A hard to open Christmas present. There we go. You may have to tap on that shaft again. Try tapping on it. There we go, it slipped there it off. Is. A couple of little love taps from the S man. Oh, man, to steal a needle bearing out of this one too, because I can't find that other one. Oh, oh, oh look at look at this one. Looks a little rusty. But you know what? The gears look good. They're, even though they're rusty, just got some sludge on them. But everything looks good, except for maybe... No, that one looks good too. We're gonna have to clean it up. Oh, 
I don't know, this diff is good. I think he knows what he's talking about. Just all rusty, crusty. Right. So between the two, you should be able to make one good one. Oh, do you want to mention that you got the parts for the transmission? Oh yeah. Got the gasket in. Got the seals in. You go grab them real quick, cause you, so people know that you can still get these seals and gaskets for this old transmission. Yeah, we're gonna have to clean this up. So now that we got two transmissions apart, we can uh, I can make one good one out of the two. Here's a gasket. You can still get. There's part number. That's part number, thirty-nine twelve. You can still get these bad boys. The rubber boot. From Toro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got all this from Toro. And got the seals. There's the part number for those seals. It's these little ones. I'm gonna make the seal noise this time. Then there's that other part number for these seals. Or 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 and a part number for those rubber boots. Thirty-five seventy-seven. All still available from Toro. All right, this gear, which is like this gear. Uh huh. This one's shot. Look at it. Yeah, that one looks pretty bad. I just went and got a rag while you were yammering on and on about that stuff. We could probably just flip it over and have this one over, right? No, because the fork fits in there. So what we'll do is we'll just clean it up. Gotcha. It'll still go in the gear. We just got to clean it up. So we'll just have to take the gear out and meticulously file the edges, get all those burrs off of there. This reverse gear looks good, or whatever this gear is. See how this one's all ground uh -huh. up? This one looks good, but this one's all trash yeah, too, like the other one. Good. There must have been some kind of problem with that. Unless we can get these gears. We may have to look and see. Maybe we can get these gears from Toro too. I don't know. Well, let's start pulling this transmission apart. So the first thing we can do is lift out the diff. Set that on the side. We can lift off this gear here. Seems like there might be a little lip on here. Let me lift this gear off. Get this one out of the way. I have to give it a little tap. There we go. Now those two gears could have been flipped around. What do we got here? Got this reverse gear. Now I thought we were gonna be able to flip this one over, but it's got a heavier, heavier end on one end than the other. But this one's good in this junk trans, so we'll probably use that one. Alright, now what else will lift out of here? Can we lift this out? Nope, how about these? Oh, this whole shaft looks like it'll come out. Oh yeah, I'll just pull that whole shaft out. I can swing that out of the way. Got that gear off. Now we can swing this one out. 
everything's good on here. Nothing wrong with that. Let me swing this one out. Yeah, see, this is this is bad. We may have to buy a new one of these. I think I seen it online. I think it's like 85 bucks. We can get one. And then we got this down here, which is going through to that. That's that whole shaft. So I have to flip it over and get the woodruff key out of there. Here's a woodruff key laying in the bottom down here. And now this gear, and this gear lifted out. So pretty simple. So our problem was this. We couldn't get it to shift. I'll have to get these out. There we go. There's probably a little ball in there as we pull this out. Yeah, little ball and spring. And then probably one on this side. And then here's the, the spring with the little ball on it. And it looks like there's a hole here that met that. And we'll get this apart. Make sure those needle bearings don't fall out on us. And we'll get this case all cleaned up. And we'll put it all back together. Hey, what's up? We're back. And uh, we got some stuff. We got the tranny apart. Got it all cleaned up. And it was rusty up here at the top. So I remember years ago when you we do like engine rebuilds on car engines, they would tell you to paint the inside of the where the heads go, where the intake manifold goes, they would tell you to paint in there. So the oil would run off faster. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna paint the inside of this transmission for the oil. And then we we got it all apart, went through all the gears, and third gear was bad stripped out. I guess that's a common problem with this transmission. It would strip this third gear out. So luckily there's a guy on the inner screen, wheel horse parts and more or something like that it's called. He makes a gear up there in Minnesota. So we just got the gear today. And here it is. That's that's a uh, Scruffy's knife, I stole it from oh, him in that it. one video. So here's the new gear. Oh, what a difference. Yeah, you can see this is all ground away in there. And this is all oh, from yeah. trying to jam it in the gear. So that, this gear fits on top of this. See? Sweet. So a lot of the problem with these transmissions is at some point they put the wrong belt on it and if the trans is still spinning, you can't get it in the gear. So they sit there and try to force it and they and you gotta shut the tractor off, put it in gear, start it back up. When all you have to do is get the right belt or adjust the belt correctly so when you push in the clutch, everything stops moving. Now the other gears we just cleaned up as best we could. I just took the wizard wheel and just kinda deburred them because it was going in the first, second, and reverse. This is the, no, this is the one. This is the original one, and it's kind of bad on here. 
You know, they still make this part, Toro. Guess how much? $811 if you want to buy it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, not even worth it. Yeah, not buying that for $811. So this was the one out of the Elkskins Trans. So it was in a little bit better shape than that one. So we cleaned it up, and I cleaned up the, the teeth, just like my teeth, nice and clean. Sometimes I take a wizard wheel and clean between my teeth. So clean that all up, and we took this reverse idler gear out of the Elkskins tractor. This is the old one. See, it's kind of ground. This is the one out of that other Elkskins donor trans. That one also had a bad third gear. So I want to talk a little bit about the shifters, the shifting forks that go in here. And you got those balls and a spring, all that stuff's in here. So on the end here, we got it covered up. There's a hole right there. Looks like money's coming in. Uh-oh, there's money's here. So as I was saying, the shifting forks, this is what's inside the shifting forks. If you can see this, Mr. Cameraman. Got these two balls, this spring, and there's a little pin that goes inside the spring that goes in between the two balls here. Now these balls are kind of rusted and pitted. So I want to put two new balls in there. So now this is another reason why you got to have a drill gauge. Why it's important to have a drill gauge is comes in handy for a lot of stuff, like sizing these balls. So it don't fit in that one, but it fits in this one, quarter inch. So if I want to replace these balls, I know that they're quarter inch. So I have a little container over here that whenever I take have old ball bearings and stuff that fall apart, I save all those ball bearings that come out of there. You know how you got ball bearings that come apart? Oh yeah. Not all of them are bad. So I'll go through here and I'll find me two new Two new balls to replace. There's one right there, quarter inch. Nice new shiny one to replace those pitted ones. Sure, there's another. Yeah, that looks like one right there. Yep. So there you go, slippers. We got two new Sweet. balls for that. Now, I noticed in that manual they don't they don't talk about this hole in here. This because this is how when you go to put this transmission back together, you gotta load all this stuff back in there. So on the end there's a little freeze plug they put in there. So how I took it out was I put an easy out in there. I found an easy out that fit in there. And I turned it and I was able to pull that freeze plug out. Now some guys might drill it out. Now they've drilled it out and they go, okay, now I gotta plug that hole when I go to put this thing back together. And it's like, well, how am I gonna plug that hole? I ruined that freeze plug. Well, you could tap this out. This is drilled 5 16 The hole that runs in there is quarter inch. And then for the freeze plug, they drilled it a little bit at 5 16 So 5 16 is the drill you use for 3 8 so you could take a 3 8 tap and you could tap the end of that hole and then take a bottom tap, a 3 8 uh, 16 bottom tap, coarse thread tap, and then tap it the rest of the way down to the bottom. And then you could just put a set screw in there, a 3 8 16 coarse thread set screw if you don't want to use that freeze plug or you ruined yours. So what you do is you drop in you can put that back on. You drop in your uh, shifting fork. You stick one of these balls in there. 
you stick the spring with the pin in next, then you stick the other ball in there, and then you take a punch, a straight punch, and you use that to hold it all in place and you push it in a little bit and then you work this other shifting fork down in there and then you pull the punch out. That's how you reload that to put the tension on them balls once you pull this transmission apart. We'll show all that when we go to put it back together but for now we got it all prepped. We're gonna paint it, paint the inside. It's a real simple trans. There's not much to it. So now that we got all the parts, all we gotta do is put it all back together, put the new seals in, the new gasket. Start doing wheelies. Yeah, can't wait. And we'll see if my valve job uh, worked out okay. Yeah, since he did the valve job and put that all back together. <laughs> Never did one on that one before. I'm sure it'll run okay. And then the steering. We gotta do the steering next. I've got all the gears reinstalled back in Slipper's transmission. So I wanted to just talk about a couple of points in case you're gonna rebuild one of these particular wheel horse transmissions. Now earlier in the video I talked about putting a set screw in here to eliminate this plug. You know, that's the access hole for the, for the little balls in that. So that's what I did. I put a 3 8 set screw in there. All it does is block that off. So the hole is already drilled 5 16 and that's the size you need for 3 8 So all I gotta do is get a 3 8 pipe plug and a coarse tap. And then you can block it off. That makes it a lot easier than trying to get this freeze plug in and out because when I was putting this back together I had to you know do it a couple of times so if you put that plug in and you ain't got something right then you got to dig this plug back out it's easier to have that set screw another thing I learned is when you put this shaft back in the one with the snap ring the snap ring goes up here to hold that gear And the last thing I'm gonna tell you is this differential can go in this way or this way. It does, you know, it can go in either way, but you want it to go in this way. With these bolts, with the nuts facing up. Cause if you put it the other way, it's too long and these Sticking down will hit this gear down here and it'll it'll lock up the transmission So you could get this thing all back together and you go oh, it turns a little bit then you find out it won't turn Because these are hitting on this gear down here So it's got to go in like this if you put it like this These are gonna hit on here because they're too long I found that out when I put it back together and I was trying to get it to spin and it would only spin, spin so far and it would stop. So now we just got to put the gasket on. I'll spray some of that high tack gasket sealer on there. We'll put the other half of the trans on and then I'll put the seals in. I'm going to put the seals in last. I want to be able to slide them over the shafts and put them on. Now let's talk about the steering. Flipper's got the steering all apart. So this is what I'm going to do. This is the block that went underneath there for the steering. It's just a piece of square steel that they drilled some holes in. So I took me some cardstock, 30 brick cardboard, and made me a template. And then I'll weld, I'll weld a piece of steel to this and then I'll drill some holes in it and then that's how we're going to hook up our links, one on each side to steer it. So that way when we steer this, turn it, it's going to turn the, turn the wheels back and forth. 
Kind of like on a, on a four-wheeler or a quad. So that's how we're going to do our steering. Okay, slippers, I'm working on a steering. Yeah, I see that. And I've uh, kind of changed the way I was going to do it. Oh, really? Before, I was going to take this centerpiece uh -huh. that mounts to the end of the steering. And I was going to weld this triangular piece on there like a uh, quad, like yeah. a quad would have. I remember you talking about that. And then I was going to put this on here and then we were going to bolt it to each kingpin. But that wasn't going to work because this is so big that when it, and it's at an angle that it hits here. Gotcha. So I scrapped that idea. So what I did is I took one of these spanner bushings, which is for a wheel. Grab that bag behind you, which I got from Rotary. And the part number is 8706. And it's just a spanner bushing that goes in a wheel of a zero turn. So it's the right size of that three quarter hole that wheel horse had in there. But yet it's half inch for a bolt. So I welded this in. So what I'm gonna do now is put a long bolt in there. And we'll slide this on one side and this on the other like this. and bolt this on. So now when I steer with the steer shaft, when I have this mocked up under here, it'll go back and forth to steer our kingpins. And another thing I had to do is the same, that same bushing, that same, same spanner I had to cut some little sleeves to fill this in. And then I welded those in. And I made one a little bit longer than the other since I'm stacking these on top. So I needed one to be lower and one to be shallower. So that's where we're at on the steering. Sweet. And I know you voiced some concern over these snap rings holding the wheel and these kingpins on. Yeah, I don't think that was going to be uh, very safe. You didn't want to trust that. So I had to drill and tap the ends of these. So what I like to do to try to find the center of that or get as close to center as you can, I find a socket that fits on there. Then I take a transfer punch and hit the transfer punch and that gets you pretty close to center. See, that's pretty close to center. If you don't have a lathe or something where you could chuck this up and find the center. We're just using it to hold it on there anyway. But these are pretty sloppy. Look at that. So I got some, some plastic bushings that are coming. They're real thin. They're for a craftsman for the steering. And I think those will work to take up that slop. Because you can see where it wore through too. Yeah from over the years, 40, 50 years of this thing riding on there. So I got some, some shim washers here, different thicknesses. And then with those bushings, it should be pretty, pretty level with the top of this. And then when we put a bolt and a washer on there, that'll hold this on. And we'll get rid of that slop that's in there. Nice. And then when we put the wheel on, we'll put a bolt in there instead of a snap ring. So it'll be bolted on. So we don't have to worry about the wheels coming off. Yeah, don't want that happening. Especially at like 45 miles an hour. Yeah, or more. Who knows how fast this thing will go. Yeah, now that we got third gear up in this baby. So here's the transmission. It's all back together. And then I had to make a mount for the brake, because we went back to the disc brake. So this was what the original drum brake looked like. And then there's our, our little uh, adapter that we had Farmer Dan make us. 
There's the adapter. And then here's the caliper mount that I made to mount the caliper. So this is again some 30 brick cardstock I put in there as a spacer. So when I was mocking this up and tacking it, I had the right clearance. So that'll come out of there. I'll take that out. So it doesn't rub on the caliper, but yet the pads are on the disc. So now just two bolts, two bolts here. I can take this off, weld it up, smooth it out, grind it, because it's a little, little long here, I'll cut that off. But that's what you do when you mock it up. And I bent this all real easy in the vise with a crescent wrench, and I'll show you how I did that in case you want to do something like this. Sweet. Real simple and easy. No, no heat required with this hot rolled steel that I bought. So, just an example to show you. This is some inch and a quarter wide flat stock, quarter inch thick. And I bent that with a crescent wrench. Twist it, bend it, put in the vise, and get a big crescent wrench. And if you want, you can even put a pipe on it. And look, this stuff bends pretty easy. Yeah, we do that on the uh, augers of the snowblowers when they get bent. I can bend it back. How I twisted it. Took that twist out of it. See how easy that bent? Don't need to heat it up with a torch or any of that stuff. Easy peasy. There's your dinner. Well, we got it all back together. It's all together now, got the trans back together. All the gears work. Got the engine back together, we did a valve job. Yeah, it turns out my valve job actually worked. I did a good job. Well, to a point, we're gonna cover that later. <laughs> um, eliminated the governor inside the engine, and these are the parts we took out. We took the whole governor off. These are the governor weights. This was the spool, governor spool. Took all that off. So there's no more governor. Don't need that slowing us down. But when we were running the engine, which we'll show you later, it's still doing the same thing. It's still kicking, still kicking up through the carburetor. Only if we over rev the engine past 3600 RPM does it start doing that. So we found out that the valves are floating. And that's why it's kicking, kicking back through the carburetor. Because we're over revving it. So we went online and they make what's called a high rev kit. There's a company that makes a high rev kit for this Vanguard. And this is what the kit consists of. We don't need this stuff anymore. You eliminate those two aluminum push rods for two steel ones, and they give you these shim washers, which I guess is supposed to add more tension to the valve springs. And they give you some new caps and some new uh, collars to hold the valves in place. And they also give you an offset key, which is supposed to change the timing at high reps. So we need to install this kit, which we're gonna do in the next part. There's gonna be another part to this because we, we still have to make the wheelie bar. That should be the last part though, before we get everything all nice and gussied up. And we got the brakes hooked up. Now I did have to move the caliper. Remember I showed you how I had the caliper bracket all hooked up? Well, when I went to put the wheel on, I didn't realize the caliper was right here and was gonna hit on the wheel. So I had to relocate 
the bracket. So I had to move it back, which was no big deal. Just a little bit of cutting and welding. That's what happens when you're building stuff from scratch. You always got to keep changing stuff. And then we're going to show you how I, uh, how I hooked up the throttle since I eliminated all that governor stuff. So here's the original throttle link. And all I did was shorten it up and I cut it and bent it and drilled a hole in this. Which is the original throttle control mechanism here. And then I just added a return spring. So let me give you a tip. When I did this rod, when I cut it to bend it, I took my propane torch and I heated up the end of that rod. And when you get a cherry red like that, it makes it real soft and easy to bend. Because you can see I bent it so that the Z bend is back here so it wouldn't interfere. So it wouldn't interfere with this mechanism. And now it's got good return on it. So it's very simple. All I had to do is drill a little hole in here for the rod to go in. And then where the, the uh, governor shaft came out of the motor, I just tapped this and put a bolt in there. I tapped it 716 spine thread. And then I threaded a bolt in there. I put silicone on the threads too so it would seal it. And then we added our choke. We added a choke cable. And then we relocated the key switch. Because remember it was on the side of the engine and your leg was hitting the key. So I had some stainless, little piece of stainless sheet metal. So I made a new bracket, bent it on my Harbor Freight. We need a little Tyrrell keychain for this key. Yeah. So now you can just reach down and start it from here. And we'll talk about the steering. Then we'll take it out for a little test drive. <laughs> All right, so we had to angle these back. So in order to do that, I could have either cut these loose and re-welded them, but I thought I'd try heating them up and bending it first, and that's what I did. Got the oxygen and a phetamine torch, and heated this up cherry red, and then I just took my big crescent wrench and a pipe and bent them back 20 degrees. And then check it, I used my handy dandy degree finder, which I stuck on there when I had it apart to make sure I was at 20 degrees. So that's what we went with. And it turned out good. So now we should see how it handles. Can move. Hopefully I can take it for a spin. <laughs> Hopefully it lets me.
I built. So what'd you think, Slippers? Oh, this thing's so fast it blew my hat off. And I was only in second gear. I think some of that belt was ripping off and hit me too. Got, got a little bit of it here in my pocket for you. Yeah, that's because we gotta get used to driving it. I'm grabbing the brake like it's a clutch and I still got the clutch out, so. Yeah, same here. I'm not used to it yet, but yeah, this thing's fun. The handling's way better since you fixed that steering on it. Yep. I think once we get that uh, revving problem out of there, this thing's gonna be scary. Yeah, we gotta get it to run smoother and then uh, get the wheelie bars on there so we can hold it at a wheelie. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right, Slippers, pull it in the shop. All right, can do. That's because I had the clutch out and was grabbing the brake like a clutch on a motorcycle and it was fighting it. And yeah. Same here. It was smoking the belt. Can't forget to hit that pedal every time on the brake. It's something new. Something new you gotta get used to driving. Yeah, we need to make a guard for this, protect us. So we still got a lot of stuff to do before we tear it down and paint it. But at least the brakes work good. Yeah, that was pretty important. You seen when I was going real fast on that one and I locked up them brakes and that thing was hopping and bopping around. The steering's not all squirrely either at high speed. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Yep. So those little modifications that we were told work. Kicking them back 20 degrees and towing it out a little bit. All right, well, that's it. For what part is this? Five? Part five. Part five. So now there's going to be a part six. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terrell fixes all. I'm Terrell. That's Slippers. What's up? Go to our web store, buy some of our merchandise that we got on there. We got all kinds of stuff. So we can keep these projects rolling, baby. Help us out. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
which are wheelie horses. Too bad I couldn't get it to wheelie. I, I did get it to wheelie off camera, and I flipped it. Yeah, we don't need Terrell getting hurt. So I didn't want to flip it again. I'm sure you're probably thinking, I wish I had saw that on camera, you flipping it. Yeah. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! We're closer to getting this thing done. Take it forever.